Hello, hello everyone. I am Amin Musayib a PhD student at uh, Boston University. You have heard about elastic security infrastructure in this session's talks. I am going to talk about security part. What is our motivation? We want to move nodes between different services like HPC, cloud, research in MGHPCC. Suppose we are giving a node to a researcher to do some experimental stuff. When we get it back, how can we make sure that the node is not compromised before giving it to a production customer? Another motivation is that we have some customers who want to have bare metal nodes. As Nabil said, some of them are security sensitive. They don't trust previous tenants or even the provider. So how can we answer these requirements? Our architecture has three different services. The isolation service isolates nodes and networks. We are using Hill for this purpose. For, we have a provisioning service which pro, provisions the node. We are using M2, aka BMI, for this uh, uh, purpose. And we are using Keylime, which is implemented by our collaborators as Lincoln Lab, as our attestation service, which attests the node. Every node in our architecture has four different states. The first uh, state is free pool. Using Hill, a tenant can get a node and put it in airlock. Airlock is an isolated state uh, which makes sure that if a node is compromised, it doesn't have connection to tenant's secure network and other nodes. Using M2, we download a bootloader and Keylime's client site uh, on the node. Keylime client site uh, reads the measurements of every software component running on the machine, including firmware, and send them to the Keylime server. Keylime server checks these measurements against a whitelist to be sure that the node is not compromised. If the node is not compromised, then we put it in tenant's secure network and connect it to the other nodes. And if the node is, uh, uh, fails the pa uh, process, we reject the node. As I mentioned, we are attesting the firmware. But today's firmware, like legacy BIOS or UFI, are huge, vulnerable, and uh, hard to inspect. Uh, our uh, friends, our collaborators at Two Sigma, uh, specifically Trammell Hudson, have implemented a Linux-based firmware, uh, which is uh, firmware. Linux boot is a small and open source and most specifically, and most importantly, deterministically built. It means that a, a user can download source, make it, and measure it. And compare this, can compare it with uh, firmware running on the machine. In this way, he can be sure that the firmware running on the node is actually is the uh, firmware he expected. How we can bolt it answers different tenants' requirements and needs. For example, here, we have Alice, who doesn't care about security. She just uses provider's isolation service and provisioning service and runs her applications as fast as she wants. We have also Bob, who trusts a provider, but doesn't trust a previous tenant. So he uses provider's attestation service to attest nodes to be sure that they are not compromised. We can also have Charlie, who doesn't uh, uh, trust previous uh, tenants and provider. So he deploys his own provisioning service and attestation services to be sure that uh, the node is not compromised. He also has this encryption and network encryption to be sure that the provider doesn't have access to his data. For example, Charlie can be MIT's IT, uh, who has the manpower to implement his own services. So what is Boltut's overhead uh, for provisioning time? Foreman is of the shelf provisioning tool. In our structure, it takes 700 seconds to provision a bare metal node. Using our own provisioning tool, BMI, 
we can reduce this amount of this time to around 300 seconds. If we use Linux boot, we can reduce this provisioning time even less than 200 seconds. If a tenant doesn't trust previous uh, tenants, he needs to attest the node. Using, attested, uh, using UFI, this uh, adds 40% overhead. And Linux boot is also has the same overhead. So using Boltwood, if, he, if a tenant doesn't care about security, he can provision his nodes as fast as possible. And if he cares about the security, 40% uh, overhead is, uh, makes it possible to him uh, to attest his node in a reasonable time. What if tenant doesn't trust the provider? In that case, he needs to uh, encrypt his disk and network. We are using locks for encrypting disk and IPsec for network encryption. This uh, security level gives us 35% uh, overhead comparing to the attested UFI case. Again, Boltwood gives this possibility to tenant to choose what security level he wants. What is the Boltwood's overhead for real world applications? We have run uh, three different applications, applications of bare metal nodes, uh, bare metal cloud, including uh, HPC, uh, hypervisor, and cloud. For HPC application, we run NAS benchmark uh, with four different applications. Each application, based on its uh, characteristics, show a different overhead uh, in case of uh, not trusting provider. Depends on the uh, tenant in Boltwood uh, to have this security and this over overhead or not. An application which represents more cloud applications is Spark Trustort. We run a Spark Trustort with 260 gigabytes of data. It's a complicated application, reads data, shuffles that, uh, processes it, and writes it back. And with all this, uh, uh, a complication, it uh, adds 40% overhead when tenant doesn't trust uh, provider and uses locks and IPsec. Here, uh, Boltwood empowers tenants to choose if they want to pay this 40% overhead or not. As a conclusion, security costs you. And with Boltwood, we are giving you this possibility to choose what security level you want based on your application and based on your requirement. If you are a security sensitive tenant, you can use public cloud with higher overhead. And if you are not security sensitive and you don't care about security, you can choose not security and don't pay this cost. But how can we can reduce this cost? Rushi in the next talk is going to talk about this problem. Thank you.